بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته How are you my students? I hope that you are happy and healthy and ready for today's lesson which is listening and pronunciation but before we do that let's revise our previous lesson the conversation which was talking about using phones and texting so what do you know about texting? Is texting a common means of communication? How do people text in your language? Do you use abbreviations? Of course, we answered all of these questions in the previous lesson and focus on the abbreviations. And here we took some acronyms. W-U, -U, you say what's up, the acronyms. L-O-L, -L, laughing out loud. B4N is by for now, of course, texting for now is, I think, it's the most common ways of, the, uh, of communication. Now, if you want to communicate with someone, you text him instead of calling him. So, I think now texting is more common than calling someone using the text applications, the social media chats, any chat application on your phone, and etc. So try to learn some of these acronyms and abbreviations as much as you can. Again, uh, texting acronyms, WU is for what's up. We take the first letter, LOL, laughing out loud, B for N, by for now. And notice that the word for, we didn't take the first letter. Instead, we put the number four. Then we listen to this conversation between Kara and her uh, grandmother. Tara is, uh, uh, Kara is trying to teach her grandmother to use the acronyms because she was wondering how did Kara finish the uh, text so quickly, so fast. She answered her grandmother that she is using acronyms. Then she learned the acronym DYWT. DYWT, which stands for do you want to? When you want to text a friend, do you want to do something? You write D-Y-W-T. Do you want to? Then she learned and figured out the next acronym. G-R-8-B-O-V-R in 10 minutes. In 10 minutes. So this is an acronym where you use numbers. G-R then the number 8. If you read it quickly, it's great, G-R, and the number eight. When you put them together, it's great. B, O-V-R, this is an abbreviation, O-V-R. N, instead of writing I-N, in 10 minutes, you just write the letter N. So abbreviations and acronyms are a new and modern way to uh, save you time and write as quickly as possible and the other part, the other side, your friend understands what you are saying. So the uh, grandmother understood, great, be over in 10 minutes. Then we took the real talk, we learned how on earth, it means how is it possible, it means that you're really wondering how did that happen. How on earth, how is it possible? Because the grandmother was wondering, how did Kara finish her texting so quickly? She was very fast. How on earth did you finish writing your text? Hold on, it means wait for a minute. Hang out, spend time together informally when you want to hang out with your friend, uh, with your family member, to just spend time together, maybe at a cafe, a restaurant, etc. Get it? It means understand. When you understand something, when the teacher or your friend or one of your parents try to explain something to you and you understood it, you say, I get it. I get it. It means I understand. Got the hang of it. When, I, when you say I got the hang of something or I got the hang of it, it means now I'm beginning or starting to learn how to do this thing, starting to understand something. You are beginning to understand something and how it works. Then we took the asking for clarification and confirming sentences. When you say, I don't understand, I don't understand, this is asking for clarification. Can you explain it? 
When you don't understand something from your teacher, for example, you say, I don't understand this. Or you say, can you explain it? Or you say, of course, how do you? How do you do this? How do you do that? Or you say the obvious question, what does that mean? You point at the board and you say, what does that mean? When you say, I get it, it means you understand. I get it. I understand. Thank you. But when you say, does that make sense? You say this sentence when you are the person who is explaining something to someone else. When you are explaining something to someone and you finish, you say, does that make sense? Is everything clear? Is everything okay? Maybe the other part, the other person will say, yes, thank you. I get it. Of course, we answer these questions while we are explaining this box. So let's begin our lesson for today, the listening. What do you see in this picture? What can you tell from this picture? What do you see? Yes, it's very obvious. It's uh, a father and his son, a father and his son. He, they are talking about using cell phone. A father and his son are talking about using cell phone. You have to, of course, you use your cell phone every day and you have to be careful on uh, uh, how to use it. What do you think the father is saying? What do you think his son is saying? Of course, now we will listen to what are they saying, but what do you think the conversation between a father and his son regarding cell phones or cell phone? Try to guess. Now we will listen to it. Try to guess. But before we do that, we have to uh, read some questions regarding the, uh, the, the listening that we will listen to after a few minutes. Listen to a father talk to his son about using his cell phone. Write the numbers. Write the numbers. So focus that each and every answer here is a number. So focus while listening now. Focus on numbers. The first question, how many cell phone minutes does Michael think he has used this month? Again, how many cell phone minutes does Michael think? It didn't actually happen. He thinks. Does Michael think he has used this month? The answer is a number, of course, because we said how many. The second question, how many minutes has he actually used? So the first question, Michael thinks. The second question, he actually used. Again, how many minutes has he actually used? The answer again is a number. Focus. Three, how much does it cost for 900 minutes? How much does it cost for calling or using the phone for 900 minutes? The answer again is a number. Remember, try to remember it. Four, how much does each additional minute over the plan cost? When you have a plan, each and every minute over the plan costs something. How much is that? Again, how much does each additional minute over the plan cost? Try to remember this number. Number five, how much does Michael's bill add up to this month? How much does Michael's bill add up to this month? How much did Michael use his cell phone this month? How much did he add uh, this month? Try to remember this number also. The last question, number six, how much of the bill does Michael's father suggest he pay? So the father will be trying to make Michael pay for a part of the bill. So how much of the bill does Michael's father suggest he pay? And from this question, you figure out that Michael uh, added a few minutes, uh, he, he added over the 900 minutes over the package and his father is trying to make him pay, uh, pay that part in the bill. So you see these six questions, all of them are answered with numbers. So try to focus on numbers while we are listening. 
and don't forget to prepare with your pencil or pen and your paper and take notes take notes while focusing on numbers so listen but don't write your answer this time now just listen because we will listen to, uh, because we will listen to it again but this time don't write anything don't write your answers this time now just listen and focus let's listen Michael, I want to talk with you. About what, Dad? How many minutes do you think you've used on your cell phone so far this month? I don't know, maybe 300? Try 950. I checked our account. We pay $79 for 900 minutes. You've used up the whole family's minutes and we're only halfway through the month. No, really? Yes, really. And did you know that we pay 40 cents a minute for every minute over our plan? That adds up fast. The extra 50 minutes you have used so far will cost $20. Wow, sorry dad, I'll cut back on my calls. Sorry isn't enough, you're 17 years old, you need to start contributing some money towards the cell phone bill. Oh dad, how much? Since there are three people in the family, I think you should pay a third of the bill. And if you use more minutes than we have in our plan, you'll have to pay the extra charges. Okay, I guess that's fair. What are you doing? Calling my friend. Tom, I have to tell him about this. So, from what we have listened, of course you focused on the numbers. Uh, the son apologized for his mistake and he said, I'm try I will try to cut back on my calls, but the father didn't uh, respond to this, apologize, the, this apology and he said that you will have to contribute in the bill. You will have to contribute in the bill. So now we will listen again, but now write your answers this time. This time, write your answers. Let's listen. Michael, I want to talk with you. About what, Dad? How many minutes do you think you've used on your cell phone so far this month? I don't know, maybe 300? Try 950. I checked our account. We pay $79 for 900 minutes. You've used up the whole family's minutes and we're only halfway through the month. No, really? Yes, really. And did you know that we pay 40 cents a minute for every minute over our plan? That adds up fast. The extra 50 minutes you have used so far will cost $20. Wow, sorry dad. I'll cut back on my calls. Sorry isn't enough. You're 17 years old. You need to start contributing some money towards the cell phone bill. Oh, Dad, how much? Since there are three people in the family, I think you should pay a third of the bill. And if you use more minutes than we have in our plan, you'll have to pay the extra charges. Okay, I guess that's fair. What are you doing? Calling my friend, Tom. I have to tell him about this. And now we have finished listening to the second for the second time, you can sense the tone of the father that he is angry because the bill this time is very high because of Michael. At the end of the uh, of the end of this passage, what do you notice about Michael? Did he care? Did he not care about what he his father said? Yes, he didn't care. He's not paying attention because he was playing with his phone and trying to call his friend to tell him about this incident but the father said to him you will contribute in this bill so again we're back to the to these questions the first question how many cell phone minutes does michael think he has used this month that michael think not the actual number no not the actual bill how many uh, cell phone minutes does michael think he has used this month Yes, that's correct. He thinks that he spent 300 minutes. How many minutes has he actually used? That's why the father is angry. How many minutes has he actually, in reality, used? Yes, 950 minutes. There's a huge gap between what he thinks he used and what he actually used. This shows you how much he doesn't care. So he thinks he used 300 minutes. What he actually used, 
950 minutes. The third question, how much does it cost for 900 minutes? How much does it cost for 900 minutes? And he spent 950. How much does 900 minutes cost? Very good. It costs $79. 900 minutes cost $79. How much does each additional minute over the plan cost? How much each minute over the plan cost? Yes, very good. It costs 40 cents. It costs 40 cents. The fifth question, how much does Michael's bill add up to this month? How much Michael's bill add up to this month? Yes, very good. $20. $20. The last question, how much of the bill does Michael's father suggest he pay? How much of the bill the father suggests that Michael will contribute in that he will pay from the whole bill? He wants to punish him and make him responsible. He is trying to teach him responsibility for his actions. So, what's his punishment? How much of the bill does Michael's father suggest he pay? Yes, that's correct. One third. One third. He said, since there are three people using the phone, you should pay one third. So, all of them are numbers. The first number is 300, the second number is 950, the third number is 79, the fourth number is 40 cents, the fifth number is 20, and the last number is one third. And you got them all correct. Very good. The next part of the lesson is the pronunciation part. And focus on this part because it teaches you how to pronunciate the words or phrases. Let's read together. When counting teen numbers, you know teen numbers like 13, 14, 15, 16, etc. When, again, when counting teen numbers such as 13 and 14, stress the first syllable. Stress the first syllable. In most other cases, we tend to stress the last syllable in teen numbers when using these words to talk about quantity, time, or money, stress the second syllable. In 10 numbers, in 10 numbers, like 10, 20, 30, 10 numbers, such as 20 and 30, always stress the first syllable. So you hear the word syllable a lot here. Do you know what's the meaning of the word syllable? Okay, let me explain it to you. Syllable is a single unit of speech, a single unit of speech, either a whole word or one of the parts into which a word can be separated, usually containing a vowel. So it's either a whole word or parts of the word, usually containing a vowel. So let's read again now that you understand the word syllable, that it's a whole word or a part of the word uh, which containing a vowel. So let's read again. When counting T numbers such as 13 and 14, stress the first syllable. 13. You say 13. 13. Stress the first syllable. In other cases, we tend to stress the last syllable, the teen syllable uh, in numbers. When you use uh, words to talk about quantity, when you're talking about quantity, time, or money, we stress the second syllable, the teen syllable. On the other hand, in 10 numbers, such as 20 and 30, always stress the first syllable, thir -t, 30. So st stress the first syllable, 30, 30. Another example here to understand syllable is the word engine. Engine, how many syllables are here? Very good, N, gin. There are two syllables. Syllables are parts of the word. Engine. What about the word car? The word car. Can you separate it? So how many syllables in the word car? Very good. 
The word car has one syllable, it's the word itself. I can't separate the word car into uh, syllables. You don't say k r. No, it's just one syllable. What about the word beautiful? The word beautiful. Yes, that's correct. It has beautiful. It so it has three syllables. Very good. Three syllables. Beautiful, beautiful. Now with that you understand what a syllable is. Again, engine, two syllables, engine. For example, table, table, etc. And the other word is car. It has only one syllable car or axe, it has only one syllable. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. It has three syllables. Can you give me an example of a word that has three syllables? Okay, I'll give you one. What about the word expensive? Expensive. X, pen, sieve. Very good. So again, let's read it when, uh, let's read it when counting teen numbers such as 13 and 14, stress the first syllable. In most other cases, we tend to stress the last syllable teen numbers when using these words to talk about quantity, time, or money, stress the second syllable. So in teen numbers, when you're talking about quantity, money, or time, stress the teen syllable, 13, 14. But when counting, when you are counting T numbers such as 13 and 14, stress the first syllable, 13, 14. So now, now you know how to use syllables in T numbers. In 10 numbers such as 20 and 30, always stress the first syllable, 30. Stress the first syllable, 30, 40, 50, and so. So listen and repeat the sentences. Circle the correctly stressed numbers. Now you listen to, uh, to five sentences. Each sentence will contain 17, 40, 15, 13, 30. Again, listen and repeat the sentence. Circle correctly on the stressed syllable. Let's listen. That hat cost me $17. We pay 40 cents a minute. I'll meet you at 5.15. 10, 11, 12, 13, 28, 29, 30. I have $30. Okay, let's listen, to, uh, let's listen to them again and try to focus on the correct syllable. That hat cost me $17. We pay 40 cents a minute. I'll meet you at 5.15. 10, 11, 12, 13. 28, 29, 30. I have $30. So, the first one, what is the correct answer? Is it 17 or 17? Yes, it's the first one, it's 17. The second one, is it 40 or 40? Yes, this is very obvious. It's 40 because 10 numbers tend to always stress the first syllable. Number three, very good, it's 15, 15. What about number four? Is it 13 or 13? Very good, it's the first choice. What about the last one? Is it 30 or 30? Yes, very good, the tens always stress the first syllable and with that we reach the end of our lesson thank you for listening see you next lesson inshallah subhanakallahumma bihamdik shadu ala ala anta astaghfirku wa tubu ilayk assalamu alaikum